The Weasley's car is a Ford Anglia. This is the same color and model car in which author J.K. Rowling and her best friend from school used to ride around when they were younger. She used the car for the book and later in the movie out of her fond memories of driving in it. So we are back at Hogwarts for the second year and this movie has a lot of great things going on. It actually feels quite a bit different than the first one even though the first two Harry Potter movies are quite lighthearted. And here are the three things I like the most about this movie. The first thing I like about this movie is the darker tone that this movie takes on. The Chamber of Secrets is kind of that thing that no one really likes to talk about. The Basilisk, no one really likes to talk about it. With all these scary things happening and people being petrified left and right. And Harry starting to hear things and he's able to speak parcel tongue this time in front of everybody and he had no idea that he could actually do it. A lot of strange things go on in this movie but it all points towards it's a very different feel and I actually rather enjoy the darker tone. I mean Harry Potter isn't supposed to be lighthearted all the time. There's always going to be some kind of darkness going on. Another thing I liked about this movie, it felt very murder mystery, almost like a detective movie. Ron and Harry are kind of the detectives in this movie and there are a couple red herrings thrown at them. The biggest one were the spiders. The spiders were easily the biggest red herring of the whole movie. They were painted out to be the bad guys. They showed up more than once in a very mysterious way. Of course Ron hates spiders so of course he would suspect them to be responsible for petrifying everybody but they weren't really the bad guys but for the majority of the movie they were painted as the villain. And then you have the heir of Slytherin which for a long time no one really knew who it was, they had their guesses, and then it got to a point where people actually thought Harry was the heir to Slytherin. You know, he's starting to question himself, question his identity, his family lineage, all of that. It only lasted for a few minutes, but it was powerful enough and got the viewer distracted from everything else, focusing on the fact that maybe Harry is the heir to Slytherin. And the third and final reason, maybe my favorite reason in this movie, is the relationship between Harry and Voldemort. I liked how Voldemort was presented in this movie. It's a very tricky way of showing Voldemort to Harry. So Harry wouldn't be suspicious of anything. You know, he was just having his conversation back and forth with this guy named Tom. He never knew Voldemort's muggle name, so there again, Voldemort's kind of playing on Harry's ignorance, but he's just being a kind individual. He's trying to give Harry answers. It was just a very, very creative way of showing Voldemort because the first movie, yeah, we got to see how scary Voldemort could be. But the second movie, he's not scary at all. I mean, it's, it's such a different way of presenting Voldemort, but I love it. I love the change and really the manipulation done in this movie by Tom. So I really love this movie. It's another great installment in the Harry Potter universe. So for Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10 muff flaps. And remember to leave me a thumbs up and drop in the comments below. What made-up language from the Harry Potter world would you like to learn? See you next time.